Yeah, we up. Uh, welcome back to the Ivy League podcast, where smart people talk about dumb stuff. I'm your host, Lonnie IIV, which is Lonnie the Third, with bad Roman numerals. You might know me from God and Gabriel, where I do the Gabriel voice or the God voice. It's a bad Morgan Freeman impression. I have a master's in business. I've been a content creator for four years now, and I have somehow found uh, three million followers. And this is Sam. Hi, I'm Sam. I used to be a rocket scientist, and now I help people make funny videos on the internet. What do you mean used to be? <laughs> That's true. You still be doing rockets. I, I still be doing the rockets. Yeah, I will be bit. having dinner, and he'll talk about math or a number sometime. And I'm like, I'm like nerd. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Um. So, yeah, we like to start this podcast with the podcast intro. Uh, but today we're gonna be getting into a little bit about threads. Um, the new app from Zuckerberg, beautiful uh, Elon Musk, and how he managed to tank Twitter, as well as a host of other things that I have prepared Ooh. so diligently. Um, let me. <laughs> we have a little thing we like to do here, um, and that is don't look at me looking at my phone because what you doing? It's, what you doing? I'm struggling is what I'm doing. All right. I'm gonna. It's every week. Somebody's in charge of coming up with the intro. This week it was my week. Jeez. Luckily, I'm musically savvy, so I have to record this on my phone so you guys can hear it, just in case it doesn't come through. But thank you for tuning in to the Ivy League podcast. Listen to us wherever podcasts are heard. This is the intro. It's not even on. Was it cracking and it's cutting like in and out? Power. <laughs> battery power. Battery power. The batteries are dying. <laughs> batteries. There's not enough batteries for my uh, for my pure musical talent. Oh yeah. Um, we're in a new studio today. Uh, if you're not watching this on YouTube, then you don't know that we're in a new studio. But maybe you can hear it through the better audio quality. I hope. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, this is episode three. It's hard to believe it's been three three weeks. Three actually. weeks. That feels good. I know, right? That feels really look, good. Look at us. Look at us. We also estimated out. How much uh, the podcast costs every week, and uh, let's just say we we have to start doing some affiliate links. We have to. Oh. So if you guys want to go ahead and click the link in my bio, if you've enjoyed this podcast at all, click the link in my bio. Yeah. Check out my Amazon storefront and buy anything. I'm just gonna fill with like rubber bands. <laughs> I'm gonna fill with rubber bands and like ha like power tools. <laughs> But, and like it has to be like all like these like super serious items and then like rubber duckies yeah or like something something stupid yeah i also thought about putting out a book recently i'm like i need to be able to afford this podcast <laughs> um so please uh tell your friends <laughs> tell your friends listen in because the more listeners we have the more podcasts we can do i think that's how it works it's um gotta be. that's gotta be how it works i'm not a doctor but to kick things off uh, we were talking earlier today about uh you know we live in la right now i've lived here for two years and we were talking about uh, we were talking about the differences between normal people and content creators. <laughs> oh. And Sam had some things to say about uh, about being a normal person around content creators. Like I feel like there's a lot of things that you notice and pick up from being around us. Like 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 we are normal people, but in some cases we wouldn't have we'd be homeless if oh, it weren't yeah. for the internet. What are some things you've noticed that just I do? Like you've you because you've been out here for a year and a half. Yeah. Why don't you tell the people? Because you also have that that normal person that normal person uh, perspective on the world of content creators. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I've noticed that a lot of content creators do, and you specifically, okay. is what like about you people. I'm talking about you people. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what. I, um, is like some content creators. I will say they have like a good work ethic. They like work hard. Yeah, we do. They well, I don't know about we. <laughs> I don't know if you're included, but uh, they. They work hard. They, they get their stuff done and then they do a lot of things. And, you know, normal people, like people that work at just a normal job, you know, you go to work, you do your thing, you come home, you maybe go to the gym, cook dinner, maybe play some video games, maybe watch some YouTube or whatever, and then maybe even do a side hustle, you know? You do a lot of things. But when, when, you're, when you work a normal job, you, you do a lot of things. I'm going to let you finish. And, I'm going to let you finish. And 
from what I've heard from a lot of these content creators is that don't they don't do shit. Like they don't <laughs> they don't do anything. Like you I like sometimes I'll like uh I'll meet up with Lonnie at the end of the day and I'll be like, Oh, what'd you do today? And he'll be like, Well, I woke up, I, I worked out, and then I uh ate some food and then I uh yeah. Okay, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, you understand the con. To be fair, when I worked a normal job, we didn't do anything either. Like, I worked at a hotel. I worked at the front desk of a hotel, and I also worked at uh, – I worked HR for um, for an airport. I did nothing at either of those jobs. In fact, I did so much of nothing, I was able to start my career as a content creator. But, like, the most tiring parts of working a normal job, I feel like you have to go into work. Yeah. Like, that's the annoying part. You have to go be there, and you have to deal with whatever corporate bull crap they're going to dump on you, which is stupid. You yeah. Know? But outside of that – I'm not doing a whole lot anyways. Like, like I remember Ben, Ben Brainerd, the States guy, we're at, we're, we're using his house right now. Ben gets on me because he's like, oh, you take a nap during the day all the time. You know, if you went to sleep at a normal time, you wouldn't take a nap during Crazy. the day. And I'm like, no, I wake up with the farmers early in the morning. Uh-huh. I'm on that. I'm, so respect that. That deserves respect. Sure. Farm, farm time. Farm time is one of the most respectable times to get up when the farmers are waking up, providing food for the entire nation, uh, everybody alive. I wake up when the farmers wake up. Are you a farmer? No, but I wake up around the time that they do as well, so I just feel like that's worth something. That's like a point. <laughs> <laughs> that's a point. I get a point for that. And then I stay up late working. I stay up very late. I stay up late working, and, and working can be like con- networking, connecting, and like and – like, arranging deals you know going to dinner uh-huh. and stuff that's the thing i do Arra- i stay up late arranging talking deals people, talking to people hanging hanging out some people might say but it's work and then every day at 1 p.m to like three or four i take a nap uh-huh. <laughs> but the thing with that too shut up the thing with that too <laughs> is that i would take a nap at work like i would crawl under my desk at work when i worked at the worked at the uh, actually when i worked at the hotel i would go into my car Park under a tree, go to sleep. Mm-hmm. When I worked at my HR job, I would go and like I just sleep under my desk. Mm-hmm. Like during lunch, at my lunch break, I would just sleep. Like I don't need a whole hour for lunch. I'm going. To, I'm taking a nap. Yeah, and I'm gonna turn a timer on to see how much longer I have to be there before I jump out the window and end it all. <laughs> like I'm not trying to be there. Like that's the stupidest part. That's why I feel yeah. remote work is like kind of the best of both worlds. Oh yeah, you can really do whatever you want to do. You just gotta get the work done. You know? Oh yeah, which I- sounds smarter. Even I took naps at my old job. Like. When it comes to content creators, sure, some of us are very lazy, but <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, <laughs> that shake, the video of you know that the, the what is it, the divorce court with the oh chick. yeah, she's yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Got that face, she's like looking at the ground, she just got completely called out. Like my schedule, but I, as a content creator, I feel like we do a lot in a day because it's like oh like what it, what kind of what is the narrative arc of your content you know like did you make content today are you editing your own content are you going to do anything more than just short form are you going to make long form you have to actually put yourself out there today with a piece of content that might just suck which is i could get into a whole tangent right now that i have had of a mental block i have had to like address and start navigating through which you've seen yeah. of like what the like content creator world or life cycle has been like but I, I opened this up. I wanted to hear like how you would like how you would I guess draw a line between oh content creator life and like normal people life. Oh, it's very different. It's so different because uh, I feel like content creators also like the freedom of making your own schedule. Oh, is, Mike, that's the best. Yes, that's the best. It's it's so like freeing because when you nor- work a normal job, you show up at nine, you leave yep. at five, and then. But it's also a little bit freeing in the sense that like once you leave at five, you know I don't have to think about work yeah, until free. nine o'clock tomorrow. You're free. In the world of content creation, you understand, like, it, when it comes to brand deals, dude, brand deals used to stress. I think you saw this, but yeah. brand deals used to stress me out so bad. Oh, because yeah. Because it wasn't just, like, make five pieces of content a week. It was, like, make one good piece of content yeah. that was worthy of Walmart being, like, thumbs up, kid. <laughs> Which, the stress was so high. And then sometimes they're like, hey... Yeah, this was actually bad. Yeah, like, exactly. Again. And then it's like, I just spent a whole week stressing trying to get that done, and now you want me to do it again. Which, again, in the grand scheme of life, in the grand scheme of the jobs that people have, I'm like, it's not the hardest thing ever to do. But it's definitely not the easiest. Oh, 100%. Because even, like, I've dealt with that, too. Like, making commercials. Like, you remember when we had to make that commercial for NASCAR? Yeah. Oh and then God. you also bailed? Um, well. <laughs> um, but, no, it was stressful. Uh, we had to make a commercial for NASCAR one time, and... 
we I spent 24 hours filming yeah. a race and I spent two months editing this <laughs> video. I worked so hard on it and then I presented it to them. I was like, hey, here's here's the thing. I worked so hard on it. And it was also my first commercial I ever made. And they were like, can you redo all of this? Uh, and I was like, no. You're that's the thing with like corporate. If you're doing that for corporate with, with me and like other content creators, we can like at least sit down and be like, oh no, we have the proof. We yeah, have the audience to back up that we know what we're doing. With that, they're just like, "That was my first one." We hate this. It's not good, and it's like, "No, it is going to be good." And you're like, "They're like, mm, but we have all the money." Yeah. How do you know? You don't have any money. We have all the money. Yeah. And like, then after two months of redoing a bunch of the stuff that they wanted to do, I was like, "Dude, this commercial is boring. I would never watch this." The first one I made was interesting, and I would definitely watch what it. What happened to that commercial? Me, me, and Sam both went to school in Daytona Beach, Florida, and we went to the same. Went to the same college, Ember Riddle Aeronautical University, which is like an airplane school right next to a speedway, which yeah. in, in reality is sick. Like it's we have tight. a we have a we have an airport on campus, and that airport is basically touching the Daytona five hundred. Yeah. So like whenever you're in your dorm room, you can like if you're on the top floor, you can like see the racetrack. Oh yeah. And like hear the cars going around, and you know when the, the race is over and stuff like that, which is pretty sick. Yeah. But what happened to that? So I, I Want to basically kind of get us a partnership with them to make them a commercial. That's when I before I was doing social media like heavy or anything like that, and I shoved it all off on Sam. <laughs> I remember like the day before the the day we were supposed to film, or maybe two days before. That's what happened. I was supposed to be there. Yeah, he was supposed to be there with me. Um, the two days before we were supposed to film, he said, "Hey, I'm actually going to Mississippi for a track race." Um, yeah, or I think it was Alabama. Fault. I was going to Alabama for a track race this weekend, so I'm not going to be there to film with you. Uh, have fun, and I was like, "What am I? What am I supposed to do here?" I set him up for success. I don't know what more you want from me. <laughs> like, that's also something else. I feel like me as a content creator, I'm so lazy. Yeah, but lazy people C's get degrees, and I want to start off with that. Being lazy in life, you know what? Let's no. Here we go. Ivy League. This is this is a thing. <laughs> college. Let's talk about it. Ooh, college. Let's talk about it. Do you need to go to college? No, you no. don't need to. No, I think more important, you don't need to get into crazy debt. Yes, that's su- <laughs> especially in the United States, like especially in the U.S. Crazy. I feel like ten thousand dollars, okay. Yeah, twenty thousand. It's like, do you have a plan for that? Thirty thousand. It's like, you remember forty thousand. That's a year's salary. You should really consider if you need to get in that kind of debt. Yeah. Anything above that, you have to be a doctor or it's not worth it. Because you know how like doctors and law students, yeah. they get into like 200, 300, 400K of debt. Pilots. Ron? Dude. Am I allowed to say that? Is that violating HIPAA? Blur that name out. But <laughs> one of our friends at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical, look it up. Look it up right now. You can see the camp. You can see it all. He got into $250,000 worth of debt. $250,000. $250, I think he's going to be okay, which is crazy. Oh, that yeah. That you can just jump out and make that kind of money. I mean, you heard how much he was making now. Yeah. He's, he's doing, it's crazy. He's doing fine. He's doing, he's doing fine. Um, absolutely crazy. But like, oh, yeah. Did college in and of itself. Also, not getting, not the whole thing got blocked with the college loan repayment. I haven't been touching those. Oh. I haven't touched those for, I graduated 2019. Oh. Is that four years I haven't yeah. looked at those bad boys? <laughs> Same here. I haven't looked at those bad boys for four years. Now they're like, you got to pay those back. I'm like, Oh, I guess it's staying on my record then, because I, I don't even know. I don't even know my login. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I don't even know how to start repaying them. I, that's crazy. Debt is crazy. With with college though, I'd say go to college. If you go to college, and you don't know what you want to do. Like, just get business. Get a business degree. Yeah. Because like I told my siblings, I'm like, yo, college isn't important. You don't need college. But like the truth is though, actually, low key, everything I understand about how the world works, and more importantly, how to understanding how the world doesn't work. Yeah. I did learn from like in college. college classes. Yeah. You know, like, yes, college is also great for networking, but it also just taught me, I'm like, oh, so like, if you're mad at a corporation because they're making decisions based off of what's going to bring the most money, you're kind of stupid. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know I'm a real Southern, you're kind of stupid. Kind of. You're kind of stupid. I am from Florida. Uh, because like the thing, like they got to make money. Like the business does not, businesses only exist to make money. Oh yeah. Because we live in a capitalistic society. Which means is everything is driven by the ability to make money and get more resources and like store them up or whatever. Yeah. I believe in like conscious capitalism. Like if you're making money, the people who are making you that money better be benefiting and able to live and take care of themselves. Yeah. And you should be improving your community and the places around you. And I don't know how I feel about even the hoarding money, which we're going to get into Elon Musk and the billionaires <laughs> of social media shortly. It's starting to but sound like, like a commie to me. It's starting to sound like a commie. <laughs> we got nine communists, <laughs> Marxists. 
My uh, hell, you Democrat. Mm. Tell you what. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. NASCAR. I mean, the the first time I saw like just the first time I was super exposed to like just gross uh, capitalism was <laughs> when I looked at the uh, the like balance sheets from our college. I don't know if you know, but they have to release their like balance sheets because they're they like call themselves a nonprofit, but if you look at the balance sheets, they're hoarding away Listen, like we're not doing this for the money. Hundreds of millions of dollars it's per not, year. It's not for the money. It's just we do make money, but that is not why we do this. We're, it's for the and it's for the um students. It's for the students. Yeah, got, gotta, gotta, gotta be. Got, the gotta students. be. The reason and because and so and that's why. And so tuition is now five million dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For the kids. Exactly. A reduction if you don't if you don't mind. But no legit, like do co- I think college is cool because oh, yeah. like like and cool. <laughs> anyways, Co- yeah. Anyways, yeah, go spend money on college. No, like I mean like College is very important, especially to build like your social, uh, not social worth, but like your social skills. That's another thing about content creators out here. Oh, <laughs> that's the, the biggest. Got the finger up in his oh. face, like, and that's the thing yeah. about you people. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's what you people don't get. Ex- oh, dude, so, there's so many content creators out here who haven't gone to college, and it shows so much because it's like sometimes I look at my friends who have gone to college, uh, even if like they didn't get like one of those like prestigious degrees, quote unquote. Uh, like you know, like I've seen people with like marketing degrees or like communication yeah. degrees or like business degrees or whatever and they are still like they seem like normal people and i've yeah. seen other people like content creators with engineering degrees and they seem like normal people and i see content creators who are in the same niches as my other friends that have that have gone to college who mm. didn't go to college and they are very much not normal people they just don't understand the social norms they don't understand how to be normal in front of other human beings <laughs> all they know is how to how to do things in front of a camera yeah. and i'm like everything else is this free game they're just they're just learning as they get rejected exactly. from different things. It's like I'm gonna do this thing because no one's ever told me I can't do it. Which is like <laughs> to all my friends out there who are also content creators and skip college. Again, you don't need college. You don't have to go to college. It's just very useful for learning social skills, learning how the world works. And if you want to develop a business of some sort, I think it can give you some great found a great foundation and resources. Um, because I mean, in terms of resources, some colleges have like scholarships, grants, computer labs, and oh, connections yeah. to like entrepreneurship areas and things like that, that you don't get unless you go to the university. Oh yeah. So if you get a scholarship or a grant to go to the university, use up all their resources to build everything you need to do. You know, I looked at college as like four free house, four years of free house <laughs> to like build my business. I'm like, I can't go homeless. So I might as well like build my business with the free time I have. And I did it for voice acting. Yeah. And now I have a sexy voice. Ooh. Um, but no, in reality, like that's what I like using college for. Use it for four years to kind of figure out what you want to do and to build your business. So at the end of four years, you at least have some way to make money and continue having the free time to do what you really want to do. Um, outside of that, what was I saying? Content creators. Mm. Content creators. But here's the thing. Like it kind of, a lot of my friends went straight from high school to content. Like yeah. I was just talking to one of my friends who did this and he's chilling. He's good and I'm happy for him. But I know some people who said, ah. I don't really need college. I'm like, that's fine. But I feel like you don't know how to clean your room. You don't know how to have roommates. You don't yeah. know how to clean your house. You, like, I mean, sometimes that's home training, like stuff you just didn't get from your parents, I guess. Right. Some, some content creators are good content creators because of the trauma from their home. So I kind of get like, oh, sorry, I didn't talk to my parents. Like, yeah. you know, they were crazy. That's why I started making content and I had this drive to make content. Because me, I, I really wanted to make content so I could like have my own place and make my like make friends and stuff and move out to LA. You know, mm-hmm. that's what really drove me to do it in the first place. Um, but there is something about like when you're a content creator, everybody like wants to say yes to you yeah. more often than not. People want to be around you more often than not. The average person has a higher like has has a higher um assessment of you before they even meet you because of what they've seen on online. Yeah. And that's not always even true. That's not even always an accurate representation exactly. of like, a person. Because at the time I break it down like this. I think I've told you, I'm like, you have the content creators who are nothing like their content. Or people who are like, oh, they're going to be fun. You meet them, they're worse. The other people are like, oh, you're going to be fun. And then they're like actually like just as fun as you would expect. And that's right. like a rare thing that's pretty amazing. And then you have the content creators who are like, it's like, oh, your content's pretty boring, but we are best friends. Yeah, exactly. Like, and those are, those are my favorite people. Like, I never <laughs> watch your stuff, but I love you so much. Exactly. You know? And then you have the few who are like bigger than like their, even their content is, which I, I don't know a whole lot of people like that. I feel like. What about Liv? Liv kind of falls in the in the middle category of like she is her her content is her and her. I would her say content. yeah, she's pretty close to her content. I feel like yeah, what you get from her content is what you get from her, which I really admire. People who can like kind of hold keep that energy like throughout. Yeah, you know, I have met some people who's like, oh, you're probably an extrovert. Then you meet them in person, they're silent. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, this is awkward. 
Yeah. But I think definitely you get some home training and social skills from doing things like college. And like, it's kind of crazy whenever you meet content creators and you realize like they're not an extrovert. They don't even know how to socialize because they haven't had to. Oh yeah. Or because just like they never really learned and now they're living on their own and making a ton of money. So it's just like, but even maybe that's worse. a lot of people in LA anyways. Maybe that's just LA. It might be. Cause a lot of people are in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Maybe? Actors are weird. Really? Act, act, dude. Actors are actors are so weird. Ooh, like sometimes that's... they're normal. I like when I get to hold the mic like it's a little baby. <laughs> like just like oh, a little cradle. Oh, like actors are so weird. Like okay, so like you, I'm trying to think of like an example, but like whenever they like say stuff and get in trouble, and also half the time you don't hear about how weird actors are because they don't have social media. True. Really? Yeah. A lot of actors aren't like on their own social media. Like name an actor who's like running their own social media. Oh, running their own. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hardly musicians, yes. Yeah. Actors, no. Like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he was, like, one of the... He's one of the more notable people and, obviously, the biggest, so like, actor who's on social media saying stuff. But, like, Cillian Murphy, the guy from Oppenheimer, he's not on social media. Hmm. I don't know. Brad Pitt might be on social media. Like, uh, it was funny. Uh, the voice actor for Miles Morales from the Spider-Verse, mm -hmm. he's on social media. <laughs> I watched this thread. I don't know if I can find it. But there's this video talking about how he had zero riz with talking Ooh, to Haley Steinfeld. No. <laughs> yes, it was so funny. They were saying they're like, oh no, he has no riz. Cause like he was like making these little jokes and like it was it, it was framed in a way he looked kind of awkward. And Haley was like, oh yay. Like while they were doing the press tour or whatever. Oh no. And he was just like saying, Yeah, you know, Haley would be like my dream kiss. And she's like, oh. And it was just like, and so people did a compilation of all the times he'd made like awkward moves or something and yeah. said it. And they like said, oh, oh no, he's got zero riz. Bro has no riz. That's and so then mean. I went to the comments and he's like, wow. He was <laughs> in the comments. No bro. way. He was in the comments. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said, wow, it's crazy how people can't even like take a joke between like coworkers and they got to just make it weird. And I'm like, Oh, that sound like some somebody with zero riz. Was yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sounds like someone that with no like, riz. Like, I, like it was kind of sad to see him like in this. I'm like, oh, I forgot you're a real person. Yeah, Ooh. that's another thing Whoopsie. with content creators. Whenever you want to like drag somebody, and then you like you're in a room of people. It's like you know who I hate. I hate this person. Their content sucks. And then someone's like, oh no, that's my roommate. And I'm like, ooh. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> or like, oh no, that's my husband. I'm like, oh. oh. Is he better in person? Yeah. And she's like, what's wrong with him now? I'm like, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh no. That's too bad. <laughs> um, but that is, uh, they go to go to college. Yeah. Well, you don't have to, but it's it's definitely. Uh, It'll help. It'll help. It, it's very helpful. And also, if you do go to college, like, get involved. Don't. Ooh, there's so many people preach. that went to college and then, like, didn't do any sort of extracurriculars or, like, get into any, like, friend groups or anything like that. They just went solo dolo into college and out of college and i was like that was almost kind of useless at that point because I, I mean yeah whenever people are like oh i didn't get anything from college i'm like i the rule i had going in was join like three clubs and organizations it's funny because i've used this in la and it's helped Ooh. but like join one organization for fun join one for like uh your soul like a church or a volunteer organization and then join one for like business and like professionalism okay like at least three clubs and organizations start getting involved. So, like, for me, I did student government, I did track and field, and then I did, like, the game development club. Okay. You know, uh, student government was, like, my professional track and field. Then I also joined Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Um, and then and don't, don't take that. Don't take the fact <laughs> that I joined Fellowship of Christian Athletes to start. It's not that you can't post Bible verses in the comments. You can. Just don't try to make everybody else read Bible verses in the comments. Let's start a war in the comments <laughs> don't right now. Start a war, please. That's all this is about. Do not do that. Do not do that. Everybody is welcome here on the Ivy League podcast. Do not go. You can post it. Just don't try to make everybody else believe what you believe. That's. I think that's a good rule. What's the rule? What is the rule on that? I'm like, whatever you believe is fine. Uh huh. Whatever you want to say is fine, but like, just be open to other people believing different yeah. things and not trying to say. Like, whenever people come through and say, hey. Like, oh, God, am I going to get in trouble? I don't care. I do care. I do care. I care a lot, which is why I always hesitate. But I'm like, don't go saying, like, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to hell. Like, I'm like, chill with that. Like, there's no need for that in yeah. the comment section. I'm like, let people live and let people breathe. Like, every love yeah. people. This is not getting theological you know, here. You know what? Bonus points if you create a new religion and then post an excerpt yep. from your new religion's uh uh, 
what is the word like holy, holy script text. Yeah, yeah holy text uh yeah start making up some religions yeah put it in the comments and then put like a verse from the holy text of your new religion in the comments best one gets um a virtual hug mm. from yours truly why not from you they don't want to hug from me you don't know that Do you guys want to hug from sam you're very huggable. You're so huggable. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're going to make me blush. Oh. <laughs> the head tilt. Um, also, the next piece I want to get into is Threads and Elon Musk. It's mm. kind of crazy how Elon Musk fumbled an entire platform. Dude, so bad. I also always thought billionaires were smart. Like, I thought, I'm like, you got to be smart to make that much money. Do you remember, like, in 2018 when Jameis Winston, you, you know Jameis Winston, right? Yeah. You remember when Jameis Winston, this was, like, right after he stole the crab legs, mm -hmm. he was playing in the Super, not the Super Bowl, whatever the college big game, the yeah, Super yeah, Bowl yeah. equivalent for colleges, he was playing in that, and FSU completely fumbled the bag. They got blown out of the water, and there's a funny meme mm -hmm. of him trying to throw the ball, and he falls back. And people started like posting like the grandma who's fall like from the life alert commercials yeah. over his body, and they're or like or they're saying like Jameis, this you and then, and, and so anytime somebody says the word fumble, I imagine that because he had like I think thirteen fumbles into interceptions that game, and it was like the championship. Award. Yeah, I'm trying to remember who they played, but I something it wasn't even anyone like that good. It, I mean, but that's it's just so crazy how like you think. <sighs> But we already talked about with the content creators. You think like they're these incredible people, but it, like the longer I live in LA, the more I realize not just content creators, like literally anybody. Celebrities of all you types. Think, celebrities, anybody who's at the top of their game, you think they're like gods or you think they're just like these amazing legends. And that is like, I don't even know if I, I, don't, I, I want to say rarely the case, yeah. but even rarely seems like an overstatement. Oh yeah. Like even rarely seems like you're saying it happens way more than it does saying rarely. Oh yeah. Like most people, most people are just people yeah like everybody is just a person no matter how good they are no matter i learned that liza koshi <laughs> my future girlfriend ideally mm -hmm. wife we'll see um we got to get to the dating phase first um she had those videos with david dobrik right. where she was doing like it was like she'd go into the, the dollar store and like do all these puns and stuff right yeah you know she scripted those I bet. She had to. She I, had to. I thought she was just being original and like goofy. Uh-uh. There's too many of those. Nobody just walks into the dollar store and has 50 puns ready on de or like just off the dome. Me and Liv made a video like that. She hasn't posted it yet. We went to Barnes & Noble and we was like, hey, you, make, you had to make five jokes using a book about you and like tie it back to your love life. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm like, I see how Liza could have done this. So, I mean, I <laughs> wow, just... Wow, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Do you feel accomplished? No. You're better than Liza Koshy. I don't know if I'd say that. We got to go on a few dates first. <laughs> uh, is it, shouldn't compete with your dates. Mm, um, probably not a good idea. Yeah, bad mentality there. But I just, I was like, nobody's perfect. Not nobody's perfect. That's so, just the concept of like, I thought these people were like amazing people, but being really good at your work does not mean that you're an amazing person. And a lot of times the people who are really good at their work, it turns out they're really good at their work because they, they're like relational life is kind of crap. So they just have times like, well, this is the only way I can get out of like this relational crap I have is to just excel at this, like at this work I do. Right. You know? So there's always a balance. You're I good at one thing, bad at another. I, I don't want to say that because that feels like, oh, you can't be like the greatest in your field unless you have no, no, um, like no relationships. Mm -hmm. But it does feel like in a sense that like the people who are like excelling in outliers have seemingly abandoned some level of like relational responsibility or like relational um enrichment and ra or relational like attention maybe like i mean look at look at people like kanye you oh know? true i'm like yeah he'd be like he's a genius with music and i'm like and relationally the dude is like <laughs> that's the tough part i don't see because i don't know i mean not with kanye per se but like i'm like i don't know like i want to be one of those people who's like really great at stuff like i mean look at I want to be someone who has like, oh, I've accomplished things. I've made stuff for people. Like everybody uses this thing. Like, look, I made a Twitter. People can use it. They can connect. They can like share information. They can find people. They can build new relationships. They can build communities. But then I'm like, do I have to be like a sociopath? Like, Gotta is that be, the, right? Is that the, is that the trade-off? Like, I mean, like any, almost any billionaire you look at is like not normal, which I guess normal people usually can't achieve that. And maybe that's because they have decent relationships. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know. Am I, is what I'm saying making sense? No, it, it does. A little bit. I don't know. A little bit. What are you, what am I, I'm saying like, all I'm saying is I don't know if you can, <laughs> no, it get, makes sense. I don't know if you can have both. Yeah. You know, which kind of sucks. Will Smith said something like that one time where he was like, um, he's like, yo, if you're ever in a relationship with the dreamer, 
you have to realize that like the dream will always come first. Mm. Which that's kind of sucks. Kind of sucks. Yeah, a lot. You know. But yeah. then that's just when you help them achieve their dream real quick so that they can start focusing on you. Hey, hey, let's, how long do you think this dream is going to take? <laughs> exactly. First date questions right here. How long do you think your dream I'm is going to take? And, and the people are always like, oh, well, that's, they're so ambitious. That's so like hot. And it's like, I guess so. Until they're like working late nights and like not yeah. there for you or like absorb, absolving their work. I don't know. Let us know in the comments or something like how, what, what you think the balance should be. If it's like, more like if you think you can work hard and still be really successful and still have like a great like relational or like family life because i think you can haven't heard of a whole lot of people who do it well you know yeah like the top people aren't usually those people yeah like that makes sense i I think you i don't know if it's true but it's how the the data is smelling like there's a level of settling that has to come with one or the other whichever one you prioritize yeah which I'd be I like, yeah. Which I don't love that, but I mean, it sucks. But the best of the best can do both, you know. Who are, who are they? Me. Uh oh. <laughs> um. So yeah, let's look at Elon Musk tanking Twitter. <laughs> Speaking of the best of the best, uh, last year a billionaire uh, died in a submarine, and this year uh, Elon sinks Twitter. Was that or last this year? This week. I was about to say. Last week. That was last week. week. Um. Yeah. No, let's talk about it. The Bread. stuff. The stuff he posted. Like he said, uh, I thought that was a meme. Elon posted like uh, two, three days ago at the time of recording of like, he said, I don't know if I'm going to say this, so Ray probably bleep this out, but like he said, Zuck is a cuck. Yeah. And then let's have a literal dick measuring contest. Yeah. I thought those were Photoshop. I thought that was Photoshop. Yeah. And I'm like, one hand, I'm like, are they just like chilling? Like, is, are they both like, oh, I texted him earlier today. Ha, yeah. Ha, ha. Like, you got me, buddy. <laughs> what if they're friends? Like, honestly, he's like, yeah, you got me, pal. I'm going to tear you up on Twitter today. And, and Zuck's like, no one's going to see it. Ha, ha, ha. He's like, oh, I saw that reposted to threads today, you know. And then they were going to fight and everything. And I'm like, I'm just, you don't have to be that smart to be a billionaire. You, I think you have to be smarter than the average person. That's probably a guaranteed. I feel like also. You have to have something off about you in yeah. some way oh yeah 100 percent. and utilize whatever is broken about you i mean ahead. we know zuck is a lizard man but like baby elon Rays. sweet baby Rays. there's got to be something wrong with him that either we just haven't figured out yet or do you think he's autistic has to be without a doubt of course he's autistic every billionaire is autistic uh true, true, you true. think you can have hyper fixation on anything at that level and not be autistic that's fair has to be. He was sleeping at the Tesla factories for a while. Autism is a superpower. Yeah, he was it, fully immersed. Maybe everybody. Everybody's, everyone's weird in some way, though, too. Yeah, that's like, fair. But then when you meet people who are really normal, they're exceptionally boring. That's usually true. I have met some normal people, though, that are <laughs> still funny. I guess. I feel like they have a dark secret if they're normal. Oh, they got it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like you, you know, can't just be a normal person. That's like, true. What? Just, like, you're a normal type person, like normal Pokemon type of stuff. I'm like, no. Mm-mm. Like, no one, evolutionarily, that's not going to get your family very <laughs> Or maybe the majority of the world is made up of normal people, and we just are around the weirdos. We are in LA, though. Yeah, and most normal people probably don't live in LA. Probably. They also probably aren't in, like, content creator circles. They either. probably live in, like, Kansas. Oh, uh, I feel like it's boring people normal it's okay to be normal no it's not if you're normal you're boring it's really not okay to be normal like probably have no riz too <laughs> probably gonna marry another normal person huh? yeah i like how this podcast goes from hey it's okay you can do whatever you want to put your mind to you don't need college but you can and then it's like if you're normal you're gonna be alone for the rest of your life <laughs> like that's just all it is like there's nothing more you can do if you're normal if you have nothing interesting do you have any trauma no trauma what, what the hell are you doing here yeah jesus like get some trauma Get some trauma and Come on. the rest of us, you know? Get- have a have a gaslight a family member who gaslights you. Oh yeah. Maybe uh, you know. Ooh, uh Fourth of July barbecue gone wrong. Yeah, lose a hand. Maybe accidentally lose a relative. Um, yeah, lose a relative. A sibling or something like that. Maybe accidentally lose them in the ocean in a riptide, a rip Ooh. current. Maybe even in a submarine. In a submarine. <laughs> in a submarine. Then go to a Blink one eighty two concert. Oh, you there you that? go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was beautiful. He's yeah. like, This is what my dad would have wanted. <laughs> I would have done the same thing. <laughs> this bro is celebrating. Bro was celebrating it. I honestly, I love that for him. He put his emotions on hold for the weekend. I mean, it's Blink One Eighty Two. They were it, phenomenal. You have to. <laughs> yeah. Was, did you? No, I didn't. How did you not see them? Uh, somewhere else. Missed out. They were the best. Oh, Frank Ocean made me so sad. Oh, I wasn't there that day. 
Frank Ocean? Yes, you were. No, 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 no. Brink 182. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, you didn't get there. I'm going to talk about a few things. Oh, Rapid Fire, three things you hate. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, let's cross that one out. Let's cross that one out. Hey, hey, uh, hey, 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 uh, hey, hey, yo, <laughs> no, no, what were they? Uh, <laughs> they're completely justified too, ah. in the sense that, in my mind, it, you know, actually, it was a little bit extreme. Um, I'll, I'll tone Sam. it. Uh, okay, so one thing I hate. Cedar Sinai hospitals. Whoa! They can all eat their own poo poo <laughs> and go to the underworld and burn for all I care. Or actually, wait, what do you? What is is Judaism like another facet of Christianity? Is there a different think, like heaven and hell? I think I don't know. Judaism. Judaism is. I think. I think you're Jewish. We should ask Harris. Harris. Should have, that that would have been a good question. Yeah, I can call him. I'm not saying that I hate the Jews, though. I just I hate, hate that you said the Jews. I don't hate Jewish people either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying I don't like a certain hospital that, from what I've heard, is run by Jewish people. What'd they do? Um, they charged me $2,000 oh. for a small knee MRI that's supposed to cost $300. $2,000? Yeah. I haven't told them that I can't pay that. <laughs> I told this podcast they keep sending stuff. me mail and... Uh, and like voicemail messages what happens we'll find out i guess <laughs> yeah I, I was like i i should tell them like hey stop sending me this because yep. i don't know what you want me to do i can't pay for it I, i'm not going to pay for it you know what's one thing you love my friends <laughs> <laughs> um i i love actually how handheld and portable and easily accessible my phone is i think that's something that is slept on by a lot of people you have 14. you have big hands, so I feel like your phone works for you. I had the regular size phone. Isn't it also kind of sexy how we got to the point in like society where our phones, our communication devices, are just like a little rectangle slab of like <laughs> of sex appeal? Like, yeah, look at this. Like, we just we, we just got this little brick in our hands, and then that can we... do everything. Like, I can't wait till it gets implanted in my forehead. Ooh. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh wait, imagine because you know how in the new iOS update that you're gonna be able to transfer like. Uh, the what is it called airdrop oh. you can airdrop people like this where you just connect the phones to you just touch them to each other that's pretty cool. and i was like that's super cool if we had it in our foreheads we could just like touch foreheads and transfer imagine you're like making out with a girl and then you actually oh. like airdrop her some files like some just terrible memes oh wait no imagine you're like making out with a random person at the club and you're drunk and like you just accidentally airdrop them like your nudes or something Imagine, Either or like, was really great or really bad, or like a picture of your credit card if you have that. <laughs> Wouldn't that be embarrassing? <laughs> Wouldn't, Wouldn't that be that crazy? Be embarrassing to accidentally send somebody a picture of the back of your credit card. Wouldn't that be crazy? I was trying to buy my grandma some flowers, and I have ADHD, so I have an assistant who helps me make sure that I get stuff done, and I tried. To send her my credit card to make sure that she could buy the, the flowers. And I wound up just sending it to somebody who I had recently made out with. And they haven't updated their phone. <laughs> yeah. So, so they I couldn't that. undo the send. So now that's running around out there. Mm. Um, so if you know someone named... <laughs> <laughs> imagine though imagine you're hooking on that card mm, you have that's what I. yeah you just have to get a new card imagine you're hooking up with someone and you accidentally bump heads and you airdrop them uh, like pictures or videos from like a sad like a funeral or something or just i have a picture of my grandma in the hospital see now <laughs> now imagine if you're hooking up with someone and you accidentally bump heads and now they get a picture of your grandmother in the hospital <laughs> while y'all are mid intercourse i just oh i just i think my brain's broken <laughs> because when i took the picture i'm like this is sad and i'm like also like whenever she gets better i'm gonna show her this picture and be like look how sick look how sick you look oh my gosh <laughs> like and she'd probably hit me or laugh at me but I'm like, it's double, it's dual purpose, because if she passes or something sad like that, because as grandparents tend to do, mm. I'll have the photo. And I'll be like, oh, this was sweet. And yeah. then if she gets better, I'll be like, ha, that was you. <laughs> you almost didn't make it out of there, Gene. I'm glad you did. 
fist bump. When are we going to the club? You know, she's, heck yeah. I used to ask her when we're gonna go out to like the strip clubs and stuff, and she would just laugh and not say no. Ooh. So I'm like, I guess we're gonna go at some point. Gina's a cool grandparent. She's, I love her. She's so sweet. I need to call her. What if, what if, <laughs> what if the reason she didn't say yes, the reason she didn't want to go, is because she's working. Mm, what she's if, working that night? Yeah. What if like I don't want to think about my grandma working at a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> What if like you just the, show up because you're like, oh, like well, Gene didn't want to go, but I guess I'll go anyway. I might as well have a good time. And you and you go. I'm and keeping sh- my eyes open. I'm staring into the light. So I have <laughs> no chance of getting any visual images of my grandmother working at a strip club. And what if it's not even like she's like old and frail? Like she's youthful. I want you to youthful. tell me the second thing. You, I hate it. I hate <laughs> she, it here. I don't she's like just this. working That's the pole. <laughs> She, uh, what's 13 p- times 37? Go, answer it. 556. Are you serious? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, had to, I had to derail the train thought immediately. I can't. Um, I, I can't. 13 times. Yeah, actually, I'm so curious. 13 times 37. 481. You are not close. Um, it's close enough. How can you tell if a girl likes you? Hmm. There's that web series we know and love about. Uh, it's like, hey, okay, so you, you do all this stuff. You bring her back home. You're in bed. You guys are kissing and stuff like that. Is she into you? Honestly, at this point, it's still hard to tell. She might just be Canadian. Exactly. She might just be nice because she's Canadian. I think you kind of have to ask. But yeah. I've also heard that you, you're not. Here's the thing. You're not supposed to just ask. Yes. Well, no. Okay. You know what? Welcome to on three. We're going to say the title of this segment. This of course. Is Lonnie. Yeah. Okay. So on yeah. One, two, three. Welcome, Welcome to, to Lonnie Lonnie's and Sam's relationship, relationship advice, advice career segment. segment. Ah, perfectly in time. Yeah. I'm Lonnie. I'm Sam. And we're here to tell you about relationship and career advice segments. Segmentals. How to tell if a girl likes you. Yeah. She doesn't. You have no riz. We already know this. <laughs> if you're watching this podcast. She doesn't like you. She doesn't. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> So anyways, looking at the yeah. cri- the Ukrainian Russian crisis going on. Oh. Want to zip back over to how to tell if a girl likes you. Yeah. How to tell if a guy likes you. That's Oh important. yeah, true, true, true. If I feel like uh, with oh, I think we got to start at the basics. Mm. Uh, how much time do we have? I'm going to take this. This is, is going to be like, not a lot of time. Okay. Mm. 3 minutes. All right. Okay. How to tell if a girl likes you. Really actually hard to tell. You can never be certain. Oh my gosh. That's the first rule. Yes. <laughs> you will rule. You will never know. You can't ever be certain. Yes. I'm in a relationship and I still don't know. <laughs> you can never be certain. Now here's the first tip. Um, is she touching your arm a lot? She might be into you. That might be a good sign. She might be into you. She could also be touchy. She could just be touchy. <laughs> I'm going to go back to rule number one. You can't ever really know. You can't ever know. Um... How to tell if she's into you. Is she making a lot of eye contact? Is she like holding a lot of eye contact? She might be into She you. might be in. She also might just she have might like ADHD focused. or something. Yeah, yeah just like hyper focused. Uh, the third way to tell if she's into you is she says, I want you to come back to my house and make sweet love to me for until the wee hours of the morning. Probably into you? She might Maybe. be using you. She might, she might be- have a boyfriend. She might be using you and might want nothing to do with you. Um, so honestly, you still never know. You can't really know. Rule number one always stands. You will never know. No. So here's what you can do. You can ask. However, unfortunately for some girls, asking is an ick. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Why did God make us so different? Yeah. (laughs) God made men and women so very different. Uh, in all seriousness though, there are some, there are some simple ways to ask. Yeah. Um, Subtle. Yeah, subtle ways. So some ways I've asked, I asked this girl like this past week, I said, hey, is it bad that I want to kiss you right now? Mm-hmm. Simple. Smooth. Now, if there was a girl here, I could get a better reaction if that was very simpy or an ick type of thing. Let us know in the comments if that's an ick thing. Is there also, a wig in here? I can I can recreate it. Uh, you just got done with your, your bra girl who just got done with the Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. What's up? A little mama. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Uh, action. I am a. Uh, your name is Larissa Thomas. It's me, Larissa Thomas. And you just finished the workout at the gym. We go to the same gym. I'm hot and uh, sweaty. The Planet Fitness. Um, and I am. I am. And poor um, too. I'm Steve. Stephen Curtis Chapman. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> 
try it so hard. <laughs> All right, here we go. Action. Good, good pull, Larissa. <laughs> Thanks. I've been working on it. I can tell you've been working on it. Uh, I can't even make eye contact with you because you've been you've been working so hard. You're glistening, Larissa. You're glistening. It's just my overactive sweat glands, though. <laughs> Dang. Uh, is it is it bad that I want to kiss you right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is curly wiggling <laughs> like a snake behind his microphone, <laughs> wiggling like a snake waiting I, to be charmed. I, and I want nothing to do. I did so many pull-ups. Now I just can't stop wiggling. I can tell your lats are going crazy right now. <laughs> Oh. Really winging them out there. Um, thanks, Larissa. Uh, I'll text you maybe instead. Please do, big boy. Yep, I'll think about it. Thanks, Larissa. You can exit stage right. <laughs> <laughs> can exit stage right. I love, I love all my friends, and I'm like really touchy with like most of my friends. But there's like every now and then just one friend in like certain situations. I'm like, if I get if I get touchier, I'm 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 gonna pee and I'm gonna die. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like my like I just don't know why. I'm like I'm okay. I can I can go up to a stranger and be like, hey, how are you doing? But then if one of my friends looks at me in a weird way and then like tries to like touch me in any they could like try to touch my shoulder. Like mm-hmm. I'm gonna throw up and die. Oh yeah. There's there's some of my friends that I'm so nervous around for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Like 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 we've been friends for years or like a long time and like we're chill and all, but then every time I like come in contact with them, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. It was like, is that, I'm like, is that, does that mean there's just tension? Does that just mean there's sexual tension, or is it just like the complete opposite? It's got to be both at the same time. I feel <laughs> like, I don't, because it's like I don't think of any of my female friends in that way, right? Yeah. Like it, for me, I'm like, you guys are like the sisters I never had. You know, mm-hmm. I'm so glad to finally have like female friends. But the moment they enter your orbit, I'm like, I'm like what are you doing? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> whoa, back up, yes, slut. <laughs> 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 Oh yeah. Whore! Exactly. <laughs> Get away from me, you <laughs> Yeah, it's like pepper spray. I always spray. <laughs> What does he say? Little pepper spray meme kid. Have you seen that one? He's like, no. there's a woman too close. What? He like sprays oh, pepper yes, spray yes, on the yes. camera. <laughs> I know what you mean. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Especially whenever they like try to go for a hug or something like that. I'm like, what do you want? like what mm. you? Yeah, don't you have a boyfriend? She's like, no. I'm like, even worse yeah. <laughs> you're in heat woman get away yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, summertime we should oh so go uh we, girls I, yes i almost just said you know here's the thing about women i'm like oh we're Ooh. that podcast huh? oh no we're not that podcast. we're not there yet i have <laughs> we never get there <laughs> i have um I, I have three sisters and a mother so i respect women uh-huh um one thing i often say i was gonna say i don't <laughs> <laughs> don't have siblings or a mother or respect women i'll let you decide i uh feel free to send sam hate mail okay. i think i have to clarify this because it is so early on in the yes. podcast journey that this is satire yes <laughs> this is entirely jokes this is satire um i think i need to bring like one of our like girlfriends on here and be like hey can you just let them know that we're like <laughs> that we're stupid like we we do listen and we do care and we do a good job or they'll just be like, no, you guys are actually the worst. Oh, like, I, I'm like, I'm like, you know, please, like, please live, tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> they live. Please. Oh, she'd, she'd go along with it too. She'd be like, actually, no, they they gaslight me every day. Yeah, yeah, she would. She would. And that's we don't. And, and we don't. And we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that. It's gonna be us defending ourselves. Exactly. The the podcast. It's gonna be an hour of defending. Um. Anyways, I listen to women. I love women. Um. I make a space at the table for women. Always. I make two spaces. Why stop at two? That sounds kind of misogynistic. Well, I mean, you did one. You you only <laughs> save one spot at the and table. That's the thing about men. It's always about it's all men would rather <laughs> And that's the thing. Men would rather make a space at the table for women instead of go to therapy. That's yeah. crazy. Oh yeah. That's crazy. I don't know. That couldn't be me. I mean, honestly, I'd rather throw a big rock off a bridge than it, go to therapy. It is crazy. Cause like sometimes I'm like having the sads or having like big feelings. <laughs> That's what therapists say to children. You have some big feelings. Big feelings. Yeah, some, sounds like you have some big feelings. Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> um, but like, if I go to the gym Ooh, for yeah. an hour, if I go play basketball for an hour and a half, I'm just like, no matter what happened, I'm just like, yeah, life is good. Yeah, like life is. We can do this thing. Like we can, we can bounce back. Like I think it's a, the, like the benefits of being stupid. Oh yeah. 
Simple minded. Simple minded. You just turn it off. You go play. You go throw a ball at a hoop. Oh yeah. <laughs> you go play with the stick and hoop for an hour. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden your brain resets. <laughs> just like, like that. Women are like, how? How? And I'm like, I'd share it if I could. I swear. Oh man, dude. Like, every time something gets like something bothers me, after five minutes, I don't remember it. I go play. I go play Smash Bros and get tilted mm -hmm. in that. Which honestly, Super Smash Brothers. I, that is the only time I'll brag. I had a whole villain arc throughout college where i just studied the studied the, the craft of smash bros the arts the art the, the, the dark arts of uh of smash ultimate and it is the only thing that gets me tilted now mm. i don't get mad at anything else i think you might have seen you may have seen oh it. yeah like i will get pissed oh yeah like there are three little divots on my table <laughs> smash the controller into the table hoping to shatter either the table or the controller unfortunately Ooh. there hasn't happened yet i i I've had the impulse to chuck the controller through the screen. Yeah. That is not the type of person I am. It's something about me feeling like I'm naturally better than whoever I'm playing. Exactly. And so when I lose, when I lose just invalidate it. <laughs> I have this little wireless mouse, and I feel the same way with Apex Legends. There was, I was actually like two days ago. I, I haven't been this mad ever, ever in my life. But I just, I've, I've been playing Apex for two years. Ever. And I'm like, I know, granted, I know I'm not good by any means, but I'm not trash either. And for some reason this day, two days ago, I played for like maybe an hour and a half and I lost every game so poorly. Oh. I was playing so poorly and I don't know why. And I almost took my little wireless mouse and just threw it out the window because, <laughs> and it would have worked too. I like, I, I mimicked the motions too. I like took it and just. Yeah, you had to stop yourself. Exactly. That's crazy. That's got to be something evolutionary. It's gotta it has be something to be. In the, in the lizard brain that says this is appropriate. So pro tip, always get wired controllers yeah, and wired know. mice. If it's wired, you can't throw it because, oh my God, I swear to God, I will, I will post it. At this point, uh, we realized that we didn't realize that the, we ran out of space on this bad boy. So uh, it's just going to be audio from here on out, but enjoy this picture of us. Um into the rest of the podcast we love you thanks for listening bye picture of the divots on my table where i have just bang! and then as soon as i do it i just sit there and i'm like <laughs> <laughs> just as soon as you get the anger out it's just calm yeah I, i'm like i'm like i'm like this is a game it's really not that deep. yeah and then i just go outside and walk the block and i'm like i forget it exactly I forget exactly what, i forget what happened I'm like, oh the sun all is well exactly like men are crazy my God, um, I yeah, I was I thought I had more to say about how to tell if a guy likes you, but I'm like, no, dude, I feel like it is he that simple. Probably, probably does, probably yeah. Does. Like I, you could just ask. It's that easy. Yeah, and I think maybe if, whenever you get in a relationship, I feel like then it can get a little bit like, oh, we've been married for six years, is he still like? <laughs> <laughs> Hard to tell. At that yeah, point. you never know. They could just be Canadian. Yeah, they just be Canadian. <laughs> That's whenever you have to worry. Like, like, I feel like. I, I've never been married, so this is all speculation, maybe either. unnecessary speculation at best. So, but I feel like I feel like it kind of flips at the front. It's like I can't tell if this girl likes me, but then once you're married, it's like, well, she probably we're likes. married, you know. Yeah. So I have to I have to assume yes. <laughs> and <laughs> Gotta then be for guys. It's like I don't know if this guy likes me, but then when you get you know, or it's like oh he definitely likes you at the start, but then once you get married, it's like, well, yeah. I don't know if he likes me. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't. I don't know if he likes me. Yeah, which you know, this is a fact of the universe. I've learned. Contention equals suspension. Okay. Now, church, let me break that down. <laughs> now, now, this is the part where we go from smart <laughs> to dumb. What if you just think we can even talk all these with smart? <laughs> um, the, in the universe, it's like it's a it's a universal law that like. Also, I really loved when I would listen to like I would listen to views sometimes, and I loved it whenever they would like try to talk about really smart concepts. Oh yeah, but just tackle it in the stupidest oh, way as yeah. possible. Like somebody who probably has no business talking about astrophysics at a level that they assume they should is trying to break it down, and it's like, oh no, <laughs> it's like no, no, like no. the atoms or the molecules or whatever are just bonding, and I'm like, mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how that works. So, but there you go, honey. There is a rule of the universe that says like, that says like conflict and co, what is it? Co competition, conflict, converse, conversity, adversity. Like the conflict mm -hmm. is necessary for, to sustain like existence. Oh, interesting. So like, 
Oh, wait, I think I have heard of this before. Yeah, like the tension almost. Like the tension in, like you can't walk across a string unless there's tension on it. You know, like sure. you can't cross a tightrope unless there's tension. Right. If it's if it's loose and lack, it's useless. But whenever there's tension, it creates avenues for like to traverse and things like that. You can like, it can sustain something, it can sustain weight. So like the universe is under like a constant tension in so many different ways. But that tension, when you remove it, like it goes limp and it dies. So there's nothing here. So like competing forces always coming up, like in some ways, even in like American politics, the fact there's two like competing forces allows for things to like sustain themselves. But obviously if one force gets too much stronger than the other, or the other one gets too much stronger or if it, if it destroys itself, then we have nothing. Yeah. But a level of tension is like required for like existence on a lot of different levels. Oh yeah. Like shoot. That's talking about physics and my time mm. got up. Um, but maybe that's a lesson for the day. Yeah. Like, it's okay to have some tension in your life in some spaces, but don't ever let anxiety take over in oh, your yeah. world. You should always have peace in your life. Um, peace with your romantic partner or partners. Um, don't let his smooth, soothing voice deceive you. You all heard exactly what he just said. How tension is necessary and a little bit of conflict is necessary in a good relationship. And then he turned around and said, you should have peace. You, peace is, yeah, but you can have you can have peace and sanity. Like not everything has to be fixed and perfect. There's a level of like I can accept things the way they are and I can find happiness in this, which is very important. Even if things are still have tension in some ways, shapes or form. So like not everything is resolved maybe, but you can still find enjoyment as you work through your life to finding these different things of resolution. And... The end of things and the beginning of things kind of happen at the same time. So when you're finishing up one issue in your life, the other one has kind of already started. But that's just life. Like you can't. That's another thing about like living. Like you always have to be like learning and changing. The only thing that's constant in life is change, which sucks. I don't do good with change. I hate change. Mm. Change makes me tired, sleepy and sad. Um, I want things to stay the way they are all the time. But that's not how life works. So mm -hmm. what you have to do is enjoy life moment to moment. Yeah. So this week, um, whether you're gaslighting a sibling mm. or a significant other, um, <laughs> don't... Whether don't, you're gatekeeping... Or girl bossing. Or girl bossing. Slay, queen. Mm. Um, Preach. Yeah. Enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> enjoy it. Take solace in the fact that you should be doing those things. Yeah. And you should enjoy yourself while you're doing it. The moment you have right now is the only thing you'll ever have. The present is all you ever get. So while working for the future matters and remembering the past helps you to better enjoy the present, remember that right now is what you got. And you should make sure you take time to appreciate and enjoy what you have when you have it. Um, whether it's loved ones, opportunities, um, even if you're sad, go make some sad art, all right? Help you yeah. express those emotions. Make some. Adele gave us three great albums. That from she her did. Saddest moments. You know, and it's not that every single emotion you have has to make sense or has to be purposeful or has to be for something, you know, sometimes you can just be just being is good, too. Sometimes you just stare at the sunset and be happy to be a part of that moment. Um, yeah. That's so wholesome. I yeah. Hope, I hope it feels as wholesome as it sounds. Um, but also, you're doing good. Whatever you're doing, whatever you got going on in life, you're doing good. You're doing a good job. You're doing great. And we're proud of you. Yeah. The Ivy League is proud of you. We say a lot of crazy things here, but ultimately, um, if you're a compassionate adventurous and smart person and smart isn't always just like i went to all these colleges sometimes smart is like i recognize a pattern and i adjust accordingly like i'm not making the same dumb mistakes over and over again because i want to be a better person to myself and people around me that's Ooh. smart you know so yeah. respect that um this is episode three and it's over already we really that's crazy i think we kind of hit our stride in this in like the last third of things we're just like yeah. just yelling at you um <laughs> Next week, um, we're probably going to get a guest on here. Um, I don't know who. But also, next week, we have to we have to give you guys some kind of monetary value so we can keep doing this podcast. So whether it's going to be t-shirts or affiliate links, I'm going to make sure it's something you guys like and something I would want to wear. I think I really think shirts could be cool. That would be pretty fun. I do, I do like that idea. Um, yeah, also, maybe like an anime thing. I love anime. You don't watch a lot of anime, do you? A little bit. Poser. Okay, just because yeah, I watch all of is. the... There it is. He said, just... oh, me, poser. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't watch anime. Shut up. Okay. But you saw Dragon Ball once. Yeah. Do I need to see it more than once? 
I didn't even get to talk about why I hate phone calls or how to burden oh. your friends. Oh, I should have talked about being a burden to your friends. Well, we should, that's important. We should do that next week. With a guest. I guess so, but I'm going to forget. I should. It's, it's written down. I know, but I'm going to forget my experience. Oh. Uh, next week, I'm going to talk about burdening your friends and Ooh. how to do that the right way and what it means and how I've had to navigate that. Are you going to burden your friends? Do you ask for help? No. I never ask for help. This dude, never ever. This will be great. I solve all my problems myself. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, tune in next <laughs> week. I he's gonna talk about burdening his friends. I'm gonna do an anatomical deep dive of the. Body. Here we go, and here's the outro. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs>